Stan Jubilisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations. Here to describe uh, the, in my opinion, of a perfect ground plane vertical antenna. That is the, the best possible you can have according to theory and we hope according to practice. We have a radiating element a quarter of a wavelength long connected to the center conductor of a length of coaxial cable that leads to the radio. The braid or the outer conductor of the coaxial cable goes to four, three or four radial wires each a quarter of a wavelength long and sloping down, not horizontally, but sloping down at an angle of approximately, and this is approximate now, 135 degrees here, this angle. That's 90 degrees, which would be horizontal, plus 45 more to slope it down. And then you have insulators. These are wires and can serve as guy wires. I'm not showing the supporting mast here because it would just obscure and complicate the details, the electrical details of the diagram of the antenna. Each one of these radials with the insulator here serves as a guy wire. You can kind of get the idea now. A quarter of a wavelength long guy wires connected to the coaxial cables braid and a quarter of a wavelength vertical radiator connected to the coaxial cables center conductor. So now if you want to show the mast we can sort of obscure everything with it and with a transparent vertical line and that can be any height equal to a quarter of a wavelength or greater above the surface of the earth which would be represented well at the bottom of the of the mast hopefully this is at least a quarter of a wavelength high of the mast and preferably quite a lot longer than that the coax then can run alongside a wooden mast just tack it down to a wooden mast or if you prefer to have a metal mast you can run it up through the inside of the metal mast and uh, then have it come out the top and connect by means of a special insulator that you devise and can well imagine yourself uh, to keep the radiator from shorting out to the mast or the radials. So the geometry of the situation is really the important thing here. It is simplicity. The critical factor is this angle right here. You want this angle to be such that the feed point impedance is 50 ohms. Purely resistive. It will be purely resistive as long as these lengths are a quarter of a wavelength electrically so that this thing is in fact fed at the electrical center. But what's important? 5 ohms. Yes indeed. Well, the absent-minded professor strikes again. This angle right here needs to be adjusted because if it's a little bit too small, if it's too close to horizontal for the radials, it's going to be less than 50 ohms. If it's perfectly horizontal, you will get about 37 ohms, and if it runs perfectly vertical straight down these radials, you'll get about twice that, or 74 ohms. So it's reasonable to suppose that the average of those uh, would be the angle that you would want, but I don't know whether it's the arithmetic mean or the geometric mean. I honestly don't know. So you're going to have to find this value by experimentation. 
Uh, I think it's about 30, 135 degrees. In any case, when that is 50 ohms and your coaxial cable has a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms, maybe instead of characteristic impedance here we should say the feed line impedance Z sub Foxtrot is a purely resistive 50 ohms. Now you get the gist. It's really geometrically simple. I've never seen an antenna like this actually constructed except for one time when I built one myself in Miami, Florida in the suburb of Perrine in 1979 and 1980 when I worked for International Electronic Systems in uh, Miami. Some of you may remember them as Amateur Wholesale Electronics. They imported the KDK and the Asden line of 2 meter uh, FM mobile and portable transceivers. And down in Perrine, attached to a fence, I had an antenna like this. And it never occurred to me that this would be a terrific lightning hazard during a thunderstorm because it was 66 feet high. It was designed for 40 meters. It was a 40 meter vertical ground plane antenna and I had actually by experimentation found this angle and it appeared to be about 45 degrees relative to the horizontal or 135 degrees relative to the radiator. A 66 foot high um, antenna. I had a mast that was uh, 33 feet high attached to this metal fence. Uh, it pushed a little bit on the fence but these guy wires prevented the wind from creating too much of a disturbance and we never had any uh, high winds there. We did have however the near miss of Hurricane David on, on or around Labor Day of 1979. It came so close that you could see the eye on radar on the television broadcasts and we were less than half the diameter of the eye away from the eye itself. We were right almost about to get hit. Yet the main outer part of the hurricane's eye wall missed us by just a smidgen and all we got was brisk northerly winds maybe 30 mile an hour with racing clouds racing unbelievably fast across the sky from north to south. And I remember it was about five o'clock in the morning and I was just waiting for this hurricane to come and blow this sucker down, right? It never, t it never quite got there. But what I remember very distinctly was operating on 40 meters with this antenna during the peak of the hurricane's closest approach and never hearing a single crackle of static. Not a single flash of lightning within the eye wall of that hurricane was strong enough to produce noise on my radio. Hurricane David maximum sustained winds of 95 miles an hour and yet not a single bolt of lightning seemed to exist in that thing. Remarkable because I've seen tropical storms where uh, the, the lightning was so frequent that you could read a book by it at night and the static on the radio on 40 meters would be prohibitive. This Hurricane David was silent but deadly. Boats out at sea were at risk. We here in Perrine were not. And W1GV continued to operate through Hurricane David as if it was the quietest, most peaceful night plenty of DX out at night on 40. Very interesting experience but that was a case the only perfect ground plane vertical antenna in my humble opinion 
that I have ever seen. I'm sure there are others. Stan Jibalisco signing off, saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which on 40 meters that particular night and on every other night on CW means da 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 da, -da. That's da 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 da, -da.